but the acceleration of value now with the clouds. The cloud now is uh, created. It, it, it's amazing. And you look at what startups have, can, have created in the past five years because the base on which they can build is so much bigger, right? And it's interesting, you know, we don't talk about much about open source anymore, and most people don't, but in fact, it's still the infrastructure and the base and that drives all of that. It's not the end goal, which is I think a little bit of the difference between 15 years ago and today. Today, the goal is really what is the application? Where are we delivering value to the end user? Security. What are we What are we creating, yep. right? Uh, and open source is a great way to do that, but it isn't open source leading, it's the what value are we creating that leads, and open source is a great methodology capability to use to create that. And that's just evolution though, is, is that what you're saying? Yes, it's a yes. trajectory yes. of growth. Yes. This is kind of went from, hey, we got to preserve this to the moonshot to actually being on the moon, if you will. So now what's next? I mean, what's the what's the, uh, the right formula? I mean, a lot of people are having this debate and a lot of the older folks our age who have experience have been, are trying to mentor a younger generation uh, to have that right ethos. What is that right ethos in your opinion right now for, if you could talk to all the young folks out there right now and say, hey, if you want to continue the greatness of open source, right, this is the following ethos. What would be that ethos? Well, it's, it's an ethos of transparency, of cooperation, and a really understanding the difference between what value you're creating that's a differentiator versus what is common and shared in infrastructure. And this is one of the biggest challenge I see in companies or young entrepreneurs in the space. Sometimes there's a tendency to hold on to everything. Older companies do it as well. It's, it's yeah. you know, you think a piece is your value when in fact it's commoditized. And you have to very quickly get out of the commodity business. Let's build that open source. Let's cooperate and let's let go of that and do it in a shared way and focus on creating the things that have value. So know what's common, know what's differentiated. Know what's your value, what's differentiated, and have the, be willing to let that move over time. Because what happens is over time, more moves into that common commodity space, and you have to be constantly moving up and innovating. And sometimes it's very hard to let go of something you built that, that has become commoditized. Yeah, so that's also the perception issue. So self-awareness yes. becomes a really important dynamic. Yes, and this is why you see companies that have been around for a long time begin to get commoditized because they haven't realized something they built in the past has now moved on. And it's their turn to move up. So and, a good and, proactive company, if this is, get this right, if I get hear you correctly, a good proactive company in open source is not just you know participating, killing, you know, squashing bugs, but participating in the community, but giving to the core while pushing their own differentiation. That's right, that's right. That's and the formula. Pushing their own differentiation, giving to the core, and over time, some of what you used to think was your differentiation needs to go back into open source and the yeah. core as you build new differentiation that continues to separate you in the market. Are there any licenses that the models that you like the best right now that you think are are worth you know keeping rolling? Uh, open core is one, where and others are. Different. I haven't gotten the open source licensing question in years, so that's <laughs> that's that's actually very uh, um, uh, forward thinking and intuitive on your part that you come to that because that becomes very important. Um, uh, personally, I like the, uh, if I look at the Free Software Foundation, some of the things they created with the, uh, the GNU General Public License, GPL, and the uh, version three and related versions of that, I think actually do a very good job with a lot of this because they encourage and in fact force a certain openness around the core while um, um, allowing you to, to you know, separate that. and. Uh, it creates a good business dynamic, I so think. So you can build a business. You can at build the a same business. Time by contributing to the By core. contributing some there. Um, and some of the more open licenses, like Apache, um, yeah. uh, do a good job of that as well in very different ways. How would you say to a, a startup, because a lot of the old models was, oh, you're going to be the red hat of X, or I've right. heard that before, or right. hey, Linux right. X, you know. They can't always make that comparable because the, the times change. Um, but also, the venture capitalists would also take a strategy where, Here's ten million dollars. Yes. Just play it open source for about five years, and then slowly figure <laughs> and then slowly out. Slowly figure it out. Uh, your five, you know, in year five, maybe you burn through half the cash, and then hopefully you'll have some management software. Yeah, or something I think proprietary. you need, I think you need to understand what. Now, your no business one's getting is. ten million bucks anymore, but no, you know. no, and you need to understand what your business is yeah. around it. You need to understand where you make money, right? Um, uh, uh, Red Hat, unique business, unique time, 
building off of what other people create. I'm a firm believer that you yourself have to create intellectual property. You have to create known intellectual property. Uh, and if your business is just, well, I'm going to take some stuff that's free and package it up and, and try and sell it, I, I don't think those business models work, yeah, right? Yeah. You have to create your own, own, own ownership piece around that. Uh, that's very important. So that's one of my yeah. pieces of advice to anyone doing entrepreneurship around open source. What's your take on computer science? This is something that we were talking about in our last segment around you know, CU at Stanford, and you know, we talked to Jim Long earlier. He's a Cal guy, and there's always been that dynamic <laughs> between Cal and Stanford. But in general, you see, so, so they they do they do computing at Cal. I didn't uh, know yeah, that. They invented anyway. a lot of computer oh. science. Yeah, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I can see my Twitter feed blowing up now. We're going to get a lot of hate on that. No, but this is good stuff. Computer science has never been a more fun time. Yes, um, diversity yes. in computer science is a big push. We well, have a Grace Hopper event. You're seeing 16,000 women coming in there. Well, and I have a daughter, yeah. um, Andrea, who is a sophomore studying computer engineering right now at Notre Dame. Uh, very excited with that. Uh, um, we were talking earlier. Uh, um, uh, you know, I was talking to her. I'm, I'm, I'm her CS 101 yeah. tutor. Yeah. It's great. It's really fun. I really, really. You were debugging it. the memory. Yeah, uh, we were, we were talking her. about. You know, she calls for me for tutoring questions, right? That's around. Good. It. What and, a great dad to have. Uh, yes, yes. You know, dad's she's cool. Ex, all she's of a ex, dad's cool, right? Dad <laughs> can dad can de help her help her with homework. So dad's cool. Um, uh, there's really a change. Let me tie this to big vision. Okay, the world is becoming software defined. And that is part of why I see the computer science education and curriculum being more and more important. Um, and I'll take that to one extreme, take Tesla as an example, mm -hmm. okay? Big piece of iron, you know, physical, big thing, an automobile, and yet they update software on that, you know, every couple of weeks, two to four weeks, right? And they deliver new features in software update. That is an example of something that is becoming highly software defined. Take today's generation of smartphones. What do you have? You have a slab of metal with a sheet of glass. Okay. It's a computer. One or two buttons, but everything it does is defined by the software. Everything that appears on that screen is defined by the software. And the hardware is, um, um, adds, adds uniqueness, but it's not defined by the hardware. It's defined yeah. by the software. And so that's my, my um, IOT, talk about a big trend. IoT as well. I mean, the machinery IOT. being bolted on with software connecting to IT, this is a whole new dynamic. Open so, so this is why I see software understanding education as so important, right? Yeah. And so broad. And of course, I have a daughter who's who's in that space, and, and we need more diversity there. Yeah. I've, I've been a huge supporter of that, yeah. and... and you know, part of the reason I tutor my daughter is I want to make sure that she feels comfortable in that space and that she feels yeah. she can be successful there. Enable her. Enable that. That's yes. what we, women in tech, big part of our programming and important to us. And, you know, we're obviously think computer science is not the old, old way. It's expanded so much. Well, the software defined world, as I said, devices are moving to the hardware becomes more generic, fewer buttons, fewer hardware specific features for the use case. And the, the use cases, the features, all the differentiation is delivered in software, yeah. right? I think that's a good thing. The software power in the world. But it, but it is. And yeah. that, to me, you talk about big picture changes, that is a big picture change, where every time you look at a space and say there used to be a specific purpose-built piece of hardware where it's moving more and more to the Service. hardware being generic yeah. and a computing platform, and the software defines the differentiation. And the updates you mentioned with Tesla, is just, that's a cloud example, that's DevOps. This is the world that we're living in. Rapid updates, more innovation faster. Yes. Great stuff. Larry, thanks so much for coming and spending the time with us. Great to have you. Some great uh, thought leadership. Obviously, your history and success has been well documented, and I did not know that you coined the term open source. You were right, and thanks for that uh, spark of awesomeness, which is today. Thank you. Happy hey, to I'm John Furrier, you're watching theCUBE here in Palo Alto studio for SiliconANGLE Media. Thanks for watching.